the software can really speed that up. And um, there really is no excuse from a time perspective. It's just that it's it's this inertia. I, I don't know. This is what I see in, 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 in small business is it's this inertia that it's easier to keep doing things the way I've always done them, sure. even if that way is broken. Well, yeah, I mean, in, and in my experience, it's sometimes not, 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 I mean, I've told this story a million times on the podcast, but like when I grew up as a plumber, like when I did my plumbing apprenticeship a thousand years ago, you know, I worked at a company, a, a residential maintenance company in Sydney, and the system was you go to a job, you do the work, you pull out your carbon copy invoice book, you write it out, you give one copy to the client, you keep one copy, you take one back to the office lady, and then they spend a month trying to chase it up to probably not get paid. And I was like, well, that's just how it works. And then I went to another company and I was like, oh, these guys are using a, using a, uh, well, back then it was a, like a bank, uh, uh, a device that came from the bank and it was this clunky big thing, which cost like 200 bucks a month to reuse, but it was like, they could take a payment on site. And I'm like, wow, right. that's how they do it. That's amazing. I'm like, that's a way better way to do it. But I, I mean, if I had have gone from the business A and to start my own business, that's all I would have known. Right. Yeah. It's like, it's like not knowing what's possible. Sure. And I guess we're kind of, you know, preaching to the choir here with listeners and viewers that are sort of open to learning new ideas. That's why they're listening to pod watching yeah. podcasts. But yeah, I, I think, and, and that's kind of what I meant earlier when I was saying, is it like an ignorance thing? I feel like there's like a, just sometimes it's, if it ain't broke, don't, don't fix it. But then you see something that works differently and you're like, oh, okay, well, that's actually things. So these things yeah. do evolve. It also does lend itself a little bit to like especially today where you've got so many advancements and so many things that are evolving and improving. And it's like, okay, at some point I've just got to stick with something and, you know, not get derailed by all this shiny object syndrome or what seems to be shiny object syndrome. So you've really got to find the right, the right blend of, you know, and the right mix of the tools and softwares and things that really suit them. But I think what you're talking about generally, like that under, understanding like, okay, where, where, are all the, where are all these expenses? And, you know, how do I make sure that I am actually making money on these jobs? Like that will never change. That's like that's a business, universal. That's business 101. Yes. <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, I mean, I, and, I, and there's, like you say, there's probably a bunch of people out there listening, nodding their heads right now going, oh man, I, I remember I lost losing job on that, my money on that job. I wonder why. Like, where did it? <laughs> yeah, right. Right. And what can often happen is let's, I don't know, depending what kind of business you have, but if you're a contractor that does home remodeling or, or, or um, landscaping, outdoor living, whatever, like there can often be mo multiple sections to the job. Like maybe you're, if you're doing an outdoor living project, let's say you can have a patio, you can have a fire feature, you can have a water feature, you can have light landscaping and have lighting. And then if you lose money on the job, it's not enough to know I lost money on the job. The million dollar question is why, like where, where did I lose money? And it could be that the water feature and the lighting and everything else was perfect. Like it was green. Everything was awesome. You made the expected profit margin. It was say the patio that sunk you. And that knowledge is what you need because what happens is, is if you look at your books from a overall perspective over a year, like you look at your annual profit and loss statement at the end of the year, let's say, and you say like, man, we only made 6% net profit. That's not enough. We need to make 15 I guess we'll just raise our prices across the board overall when really what really could be the factor is that you're making great margins on three quarters of your work and you're losing it all on one quarter of your work. We had a, um, we had a client that was an Australian based client. This is going back a long time. <clears throat> they, were, they were based out in um, uh, Western Australia and they had a, they were a plumbing company. They had two divisions. They had a residential maintenance division and they had a construction, uh, sorry, like a, a new builds uh, project based division. Anyway, the project side of the business was taking up about 80% of their, or it was, it was worth about 80% of the time of their uh, revenue generated. But the residential division was where they were like, if you look at a profit percentage, it was far more profitable. Like they were like streaks ahead and truthfully less headaches because they, right. they rode their own boat with that. They didn't have to worry about um, payment periods for builders yes. and like this whole three month from invoice date carry on and you know, where essentially you have to bankroll the builders, <coughs> excuse me. So anyway, when we looked at the numbers there, like it was, it was just coming in as a, like somebody that's like not really involved with a different view on it. And like looking at it, we were like, you know, you're like way more profitable over here in residential. Like, yeah, they, you, you're 80% of your income is coming from commercial at the moment, but all it's doing is keeping you guys busy. 